Looks like we're on the record. Um, Ms. Merced, good morning again. Good morning, Your Honor. And uh, who's my public defender, Ms. Courtney Daly, but I'll only Alicia be covering Orange County. Uh, okay. Um, she will be covering Osceola. All right. I think. Um, Alicia Smith. I'm go ahead and give me your name again. Office. Courtney Daly. Miss Daly. Yes. Okay. And Miss Merced, you will be covering both Orange and Osceola County, correct? Yes, Your Honor. And who is my public defender covering Osceola County? Alicia Smith, on behalf of the public defender's office, Judge. And what's your last name again? Spell it for Smith. me. Smith. Smith, okay. S-M-I-T-H. Got it. Thank you, Ms. Smith. I appreciate it. All right. So the court and is on. this is Jorge State Certified Court Interpreter. Oh, good. Thank you, Mr. Court Interpreter. We appreciate you, too. Um, look, uh, Jacavius Denard Smith. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, uh, David Bigney on behalf of Mr. Smith. All right, Mr. Smith, the court has reviewed the probable cause affidavit in your file um, and will read as follows possession of cannabis with intent to sell or deliver with a weapon uh, three counts um, possession of cannabis uh, less than 20 grams with the weapon three counts possession of cannabis less than 20 grams one count possession of a firearm by a convicted delinquent there were three counts and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon three counts and possession of a firearm or ammunition by a convicted felon, three counts, and grand theft, uh, third degree of a firearm, one count. Um, with regard to bond, I'll hear thank what you, Your Honor. Well, counsel would like to say. Thank you. With regard to probable cause, I've got several probable cause arguments on some of these counts. With reference to the first three counts, possession of cannabis with intent to sell, there is one bag um, uh, slightly over the misdemeanor amount uh, package weight of 30 point something grams. Uh, it's not bagged separately, one bag, no scales, no drug paraphernalia, no ledgers, um, and uh, nothing to suggest that there would be any intent to sell. Uh, so we would argue that there is no intent to sell, uh, uh, nothing to support any probable cause on the possessions with intent to sell. As far as counts four, five, and six, uh, and I'll include p uh, count seven, the possession of cannabis over 20 grams, the uh, the thought process with that, again, there's one bag, so you've got one count, not four counts. So they're just capitalizing over and over again on one baggie. One baggie, packaged weight, 30 grams. Uh, so we would agree that there's probable cause for one of those four counts, but just one of those four counts, and none for the other three. Counts eight, nine, and 10, uh, there were three firearms uh, located in the front uh, uh, hood area according to the probable cause affidavit. We're not contesting that there's probable cause on counts 8, 9, and 10. However, on counts 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, we're contesting probable cause on all of those um, and that it is at bare minimum duplicative charges. It's uh, uh, they're either charging him as a juvenile or charging him as, a, as, as an adult, uh, but they're charging him for the same weapons over and over again. And as charged, they're suggesting that there's a lot more firearms uh, than they've listed. And we're stipulating to the counts on the firearms on counts uh, 8, 9, and 10. So if he's a probable cause on those three counts, then there should not be any probable cause on 10. I'm sorry, 11 through 16. As far as count 17, uh, they're suggesting that one of the firearms was stolen, but there's nothing to uh, within the four corners of the affidavit to suggest that, that uh, Mr. Smith had any knowledge that this firearm was stolen. Um, well, there's, there's nothing to suggest that he had knowledge of any of the firearms to begin with, but uh, certainly as it relates to this particular one, uh, and, and, and whether or not it was stolen, there's no, nothing within the four corners of the affidavit suggesting when this firearm was stolen. Was it, was it stolen minutes beforehand? It was recovered years beforehand. Nothing along that line. There's no statements, so there's no probable cause. Uh, so from a probable cause standpoint, we're conceding one of the counts between counts four through seven. Uh, we are stipulating to counts eight, nine, and 10, and uh, that there's no probable cause for any of the other counts. As far as the bond amount, on any of the accounts, uh, any of the, uh, of the counts, we would ask that 
that um, that other than the primary offense that all following counts be one hundred dollars or ROR. Ms. Merced. Your Honor, State would request a reset in order to obtain supplemental reports as to the counts that have been challenged for PC. I believe that counts one, two, three, uh, five through seven. And I believe counsel indicated they would concede to eight, nine, ten. And Your Honor, we'd object. Uh, well, I'm not, I, I won't be granting a reset as to counts one through three. Your Honor, may I argue as to one through three, Your Honor? Well. For those counts, uh, the officer did indicate that he obtained dealer wallets from the defendant's person where the bills were bundled and separated into different denominations, which would be indicative of the intent to sell, given the amount of marijuana that was obtained, which was a total weight of 30.35 grams. There's no indication of the amount of money. The court's not going to grant a reset as to count one, two, and three. Uh, the court finds probable cause as to count one, and no probable cause as to count two and count three. And as to count one, the court will order a bond of $500. As to count four, five, and six, the court finds probable cause as to count four but not count five nor count six. I'm not gonna grant a reset as to that either. Uh, the court will set bond at $500 as to count four. As to count um, seven, the court finds probable cause and allows bond at $1,000 as previously um, as previously requested. As to count eight, nine, and ten. Uh, Ms. Merced, what do you have to say as to count eight, nine, and ten? Your Honor, I believe those are the counts that counsel has uh, conceded. Oh, I'm sorry. You're absolutely right. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I misspoke. The court does find probable cause as to eight, nine, and ten. Bond remains uh, at 5000 for eight, 5,000 for nine, and 5,000 for 10. Would the court consider lowering the bond on two of those three? Uh, what, Ms. Merced, what, well, let me get, get through, let me get through um, 11 uh, through 16, and I would like Ms. Merced to respond to your argument as to 11 through 16, but hold that thought, and I, Ms. Merced will be allowed to respond to that as well. Ms. Merced. Your Honor, as to counts um, 11 through 16, again, state would request a reset to obtain a supplemental report to confirm the number of firearms that were in the vehicle. So there were three firearms that were identified and the counts 11 through 16 have to do with um, the status of the, in prior status of the defendant as a convicted felon and or a convicted delinquent um, so since the court has found probable cause of the convicted delinquent um, would it be duplicative to also find probable cause as a convicted felon I don't believe so your honor because looking at this it indicates that he has prior he has previously been adjudicated delinquent and also had felony charges and I would have to pull up his history to confirm whether it's I, I can tell the court the history and I'm sure once it's pulled up it'll be verified the only adult uh, charge out there is a withhold time served I believe thousand dollar fine to a, a possession of marijuana over 20 and that was about 28 grams and how old is the defendant now he's 19 and that was a withhold of adjudication mm -hmm. so he is not a convicted felon as an adult um, uh, the court will find probable cause as to counts 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, and will order $150 as the bond. On each count? Yes, sir. The court finds probable cause as to grand theft third degree 
of a firearm and the bond will stay at $1,000. Now I'll hear any argument on reduction of the bonds that the quarters already announced as well as response. Oh yes, oh yes, the court has um, neglected to indicate that I will be ROR in the defendant as to count two, count three, count five, and count six. As far as reducing the bond, Your Honor, the, uh, the amount, uh, uh, typically the biggest charge, or it's not uncommon where the biggest charge stays at the standard and the subsequent charges are, are then reduced to um, Hundred or ROR or something along that line, a much smaller a bond amount. Uh, this is not something. The extra, uh, the extra amount isn't something that is going to uh, assure that he shows up any more than the, what the bond is. Uh, there's no indication that he's ever missed a court appearance, a required court appearance, uh, and to my knowledge, he has not. And uh, certainly, with my, uh, with my experience with his, Mr. Smith, he has not missed any. Uh, so the, the necessity to have a duplicative charge have the same bond as the, as the first one I, I think is unnecessary. So we would ask that on the, on, on the uh, counts 8 and 9, I'm sorry, was it 8 and 9 or 9 and 10? 9 and 10 I think it is. We would ask that those be reduced from 5000 Fifty, as you had on the other firearm counts. Miss Merced. Your Honor, State would object as. State would argue that the bond remains, as Your Honor's already stated, five thousand as to each count. No court will grant the motion as to only count nine and ten. And we'll reduce the bond to 150. The court will also reduce the bond in count 17 to 150. The bond remains at $5,000 in count eight, $1,000 in count seven, $500 in count four, and $500 in count one. Any further orders that the state would like to enter with regard to bond in this case? Your Honor, state. You want me to order no possession of any firearms or weapons as yes, a condition of bond? The court will enter an order of no possession of firearms or weapons as a condition of bond. Anything further, Ms. Merced? No, Your Honor. Anything further, Mr. Bigney? No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you say Osceola? And are we on? Yeah, I think we are, because the attorney spoke. Well, the attorney heard me before, so. All right. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, the court is uh, going to begin with the initial appearance proceedings. And as I call your name, please come forward to the podium. And please understand that uh, we're going to be going pretty fast here, pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to, if you, if I'm going too fast for you, you can tell me if you don't understand something. I will be appointing the public defender to represent each case. Um, Patrick Alexander. Can we reset him, Judge? Uh, yes. Is there a reason why? We, we can just reset. Want to be reset. All right. Do you want to re reset for tomorrow or Monday? That's tomorrow's fine, Judge. Okay. Reset for tomorrow. She didn't really give a reason, but I grant it. Um, Stephen William Argo. All right, so the, uh, you were picked up on a violation of probation or community control bond remains set at zero bond. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sabrina Talisa Bacchus. Ms. Bacchus, the court does find probable cause for the offensive battery, domestic violence, and will order bond in your case at 
$500, order no contact with the victim, no return to the location where this incident occurred, with the exception of when. Does she does. I'm sorry, go ahead, counsel. I'm sorry, I was gonna ask for our ROR judge. She does have no prior, sh she qualifies for PTR by nature of the charge. However, she resides in Philadelphia. She was here on vacation as to this charge. No court, the court declines to order ROR and will in instead order the $500 as the court has previously indicated. No contact, no return with the exception of one time visit with law enforcement to pick up any personal belongings if necessary. Thank you, ma'am. Edwin Maverick Brayton and Mr. Brayton, uh, the court does find probable cause for uh, offenses as follows, carrying a concealed firearm in possession of a weapon or ammunition. The court uh, will order bond as count one, um, $1,000 and as count two, $4,000. The court further um, informs you that you were picked up on a violation of probation and bond on that case will uh, stay set at no bond. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Raymond Oliver Brooks. All right, Mr. Brooks, you were picked up for a violation of probation or community control bond remains set at no bond in your case. Thank you, sir. Thank you. James Cannon Ferrero. We're gonna waive the reading of the charges, Judge. All right, so the court has found probable cause for the charges um, and the court um, will, uh, bond will remain set at no bond, both count one is and count the court two. Finding yes, ma'am. Is the court finding proof evident presumption great as to the no bond status? Um, uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Akeem Dion Holland, Holliman. Akeem Dion Holliman. The court. Um, good morning. Yes, sir, you were picked up for a violation of probation or community control and bond will stay set at no bond in your case. Thank you, sir. Casey Robert Jonas. Uh, the court um, does not find probable cause for the offense of battery on a law enforcement officer, firefighter, or security person. And does the state wish to um, try to provide some probable cause to the court? Uh, Your Honor, it, it. Your Honor, again, state would just request a reset to try to obtain a supplemental report to see if there's any additional information to qualify the victim as a law enforcement officer as identified in the statute. Would you like for me to reset it for tomorrow or for Monday? Uh, for Monday, please, Your Honor, because I don't know if we'll be able to get it by tomorrow. All right. I'd ask for only 24 hours, Judge, so I'd ask for tomorrow. Uh, okay. Um, does this, doesn't the statute allow additional time Ms. Merced. Yes, Your Honor, we have up to 48 hours. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and reset it for Monday, uh, which is the third. Judge, Officer Dunkirk with PTR. I can't hear you. Um, Mr. Dunkirk. Officer Dunkirk with PTR. Oh, yes, ma'am. Mr. Jonas I, I is still currently can't. out on county. Um, Mr. Donis is currently out on county probation as of April 15th of this year. In case number 18MM4201. All right, well, given that the court is not uh, able to find probable cause at this time, I will take no action on any of the cases if that's what you're asking me to consider. Yes, Judge. Not at this time. Um, you can bring that up again on, tomorrow, uh, on Monday when the case is called. Okay, thank you, Judge. Thank you, too. I appreciate it, thank you. Anthony Aurelio Leal. All right, sir, you were picked up for violation of probation or community control and bond will remain set at no bond 
Thank you, sir. Charmaine Ezeal Lowman. Madam, the court does find probable cause for the offense of battery domestic violence. I will order a bond of $500, order no contact with the victim, no return to the location where this incident occurred, with the exception of a one-time visit with law enforcement if necessary for personal belongings. Thank you, ma'am. Judge, she, do, she does qualify for pretrial release, and pretrial release was able to make contact with the victim who's asking that she be allowed to return home, as well as asking for a no hostile contact provision. So we'd ask for PTR with those conditions. And uh, the court will grant that with, if there's no objection from the state. The state would object, Your Honor, would ask for no contact. Okay. Well, she has been assessed, and the paperwork indicates that she qualifies for PTR. Um, and, and it and it says the victim wants no hostile contact and to return home. So I'm assuming that they've done um, you know, some investigation on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grant that request. I'll allow uh, PTR, uh, no hostile contact. And um, the, you may return home to the location where this incident occurred. All right, thank you. Thank you. Henry Lugo. Henry Lugo, you were picked up on an out-of-county warrant for Bar Brevard County. Bond is set at $2,000 and will remain set at $2,000. Thank you, sir. Jimmy Lamar Lynch. And just to be clear, Judge. Be yes, ma'am. Because it's an out-of-county warrant, we won't be appointed, correct? Oh, uh, well, I mean, I usually appoint the public defender on every single case. Do you not want to be appointed on that? I mean, we can be appointed, Judge, that's fine. All right. Jimmy Lamar Lynch. Jimmy can we Lynch. reset him, Judge? Uh, to tomorrow? Yes, Judge. Oh, yes, ma'am. Um, Ruben Munet. Or Munet. Ruben. The court finds probable cause for the offense of battery and we'll uh, set bond at $500, order no return and no contact with the victim. Um, you may return one time in the presence of law enforcement to retrieve any personal belongings if necessary. Thank you. Judge, he does, he qualifies for pretrial release. Can we have pretrial release with the no contact, no return, but the one time assist? Okay, let me see. Any objection to PT, PTR with those conditions? Uh, no objection to PTR with no contact and the bond. All right, the court will grant that request and order PTR, no contact, no return, with the exception of one time in the presence of law enforcement to get personal belongings. Thank you. Luis Ramirez Lamort. Can we reset him, Judge? He's in medical. Yes, reset for medical tomorrow. Um, Ruben Guillermo Rodriguez. Sir, um, you were picked up for violation of probation on two active warrants. Bond will remain set at zero. No bond on both cases. Thank you, sir. And New Day Santiago. And New Day Santiago. He bonded. Previously bonded. Veronica Wynette Saunders. Bonded as well. Okay, previously bonded. Cynthia Louise Sykes. Sykes. She's approaching, Judge. Okay. Ma'am, the court does find probable cause for the offense of trespass, and uh, bond will stay set at $500 in your case. The charge does qualify for pretrial release, Judge. We'd ask for PTR in this case. Any objections? No objection, Your Honor. All right. The court will um, order pretrial release in this case. The state would just request no return, Your Honor. Uh, yes, and the court will order no return to the location where this incident occurred as a condition of PTR. Thank you. Justin Keith Smith. Sir, you were picked up for failure Good to appear in uh, court. A court uh, bond will remain set at no bond in your case. Thank you. Tatiana Soler. Ms. Ms. Sola, the court finds probable cause for 
uh, offenses of possession of alcohol by an underage person and bond is set at $250. The court finds um, probable cause for uh, driving under the influence and bond is set at $500 as a condition of your bond, ma'am, you are ordered to not drive a motor vehicle. Uh, the court has considered PTR in your case and decided against PTR and will not be ordering PTR in your case. Thank you. Judge, she does have no priors. I'm not sure if the court was aware of that when the court decided they weren't willing to do pretrial release, but I didn't want to at least put it on the record. Well, I was counting these two offenses. Um, what says the state? Your Honor, state would just leave it to the discussion of the court. No PTR. So what's the, so she was given bond us above cases though, correct? She's given bond on both her cases. Okay. All right. Thank you, Judge. Julio Tejeda. The court finds probable cause for battery in this case for order of bond of $500, no contact, no return. She does qualify for PTR. Can we have pretrial release with no contact, no return, but a one-time assist? Any objection, Ms. Merced? No objection, Your Honor. All right, with those conditions, the court will allow PTR, no contact. The court will allow a Judge. one, I'm sorry, one Judge, time. my apologies. Um, Okay, can you get we to the microphone? To the microphone. We spoke to the victim, Judge. We spoke to the victim, Judge, and she requests a no hostile contact. All right, Ms. Merced. The state would object, Your Honor, and request no contact. All right, well, um, given that the victim is requesting no hostile contact, I'm going to um, adhere to the victim's request, allow no hostile contact, uh, bond, uh, 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 and PTR, no hostile contact. Thank you. Is the no return provision still in place, Judge? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay, so just PTR, no hostile contact, only two conditions. Yes, ma'am. Lisa, thank, thank you. Lisa Gabriella Vanman. <coughs> right, ma'am, you were picked up on uh, multiple warrants. Um, uh, the bond remains set as follows: three thousand five hundred. 1,000, 2,500, and 1,000. Your bond total is $8,000 on your various um, uh, warrants. Thank you, ma'am. Jacole Leanne Whitfield. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The court finds probable cause for a petty theft bond remains set at $500. She does qualify for pretrial release. Judge, can we have pretrial release in this case? I had an, um, I don't consider pretrial release in this case, unless the state has no objection. Uh, your Honor, again, state would leave it to your Honor's discretion. All right, if you leave it to my discretion, then the court's not gonna allow it. $500 bond. Edgar Jr. Willis. Um, the court does find probable cause for uh, battery by strangulation and domestic violence. Um, as to each count, let me see what those. The court will allow a bond of $500, um, order no contact with the victim, no return to the location where this incident occurred. He does qualify for pretrial release, Judge. Can we have pretrial release with a no contact, no return? The court is not inclined to do so unless the state agrees. No, Your Honor. No, denied. Each count. So it's 500 per count? Yes, ma'am. No contact, no return, with the exception of one, uh, one time uh, return uh, to retrieve personal belongings. Uh, the court also is uh, entering an order of no weapons or firearms. Israeli Ferrer Albello. The court, uh, ma'am, you were picked up on a violation of probation or community control. In your case, bond will remain set at no bond. Thank you, ma'am. Kennedy Step. 
Kenneth E. Step. Okay. One moment, Judge. They have to bring them from the back. We're going to waive the reading of the charges, and I believe Mr. Estep is hiring a private attorney. Okay. Well, can you hear me? Because I need to um, inform the state that was, uh, it was very difficult, and I'm not sure that I found probable cause in this case because there were so many pages of the um, PC affidavit that were blacked out, and it, I couldn't read them. Um, so I don't know why they were blacked out. I mean, I'm the judge. I should be able to read them. But the whole entire pages were blacked out. So it's a stretch to find probable cause in this case. I need more information. Um, perhaps it was just an oversight that I received all these blacked out pages. Uh, what says the state? Your Honor, state would request a reset so that we can obtain a clear affidavit. All right, then, um, Mr. Estep, I'm going to reschedule tomorrow, Ms. Ms. Merced, or I the next day? We could request Monday, Your Honor. I don't know that we would get it in time for tomorrow. All right, the court will reschedule the case until Monday uh, for the state to. And can we make sure that. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, Judge, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just going to ask can we make sure that the public defender gets a copy as well for initial appearance of the, un, I guess, an unredacted copy? Uh, Ms. Oh, yes, Your Honor. Know. I don't know how we do that. Uh, all interested parties should receive a copy, but mainly the judge needs a copy because um, that the judge cannot find probable cause without a, an unredacted copy. Thank you. Well, the public defender until he gets his own attorney. The public defender is appointed. Edgar Willis. Edgar Willis. No, we did that one, Judge. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, so we do. And we did, I think we did Alvaro Lugo. I think I got some copies. No, I'm asking to reset him, though, Judge. Okay. Alvaro Lugo? I'm asking to reset that one. Oh, reset. Um, For tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. Tomorrow. Okay. Um, Scott Bati. All right, Mr. Body, you were picked up for violation of probation or community control. Bond remains uh, set at no bond in your case. Thank you, sir. The last two we're asking to reset, Judge Medina Diaz and, and Rivera. The court will reset both Henry Medina Diaz and Alberto Rivera. Anything further, Ms. Smith? No, Judge. Um, what time are we going to start tomorrow? Do you know? Or should we have them in the room, I guess I should say? Well, we, we start at 11 o'clock. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Judge. See you tomorrow. You too. Bye-bye. I haven't read these things, so I just want one at a time, one defendant at a time, until we get to the part where I've read it. This is a stack that I haven't read. I read the I read the the ones from the other the other young lady. I didn't read your stack. No, um, that sticky means. Yeah, the. So I just need to know what I've read versus what I haven't read. Oh, hold on, hold on. The sticky was here. I thought maybe that's what they meant. No. Oh. And there was a stack from you that was not read. Where is that at? Oh, no. it's here. I just never looked, maybe. So what my understanding is that your stack goes first. No, the Spanish and the Rups. Okay, but your stack that. goes before the stack that I read. I read mm -hmm. everything she gave me. Right. So did you read any of mine at all? Only the move up oh, from okay. you. Okay, so that means there's all sheets in here. Right here. Okay, so those are the unread ones. Mm -hmm. And these are the red ones. Because I read way more than that. The Spanish and the Lips. I read way more than that. She gave me more than Yeah, because you read the bottom half. Yeah, the bottom half. Right, right, right. right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do these? Okay. And these are the ones that I said I'll hold just to see. 
Okay. Jorge Rafael Lopez Fuentes. All right, is the interpreter online? The interpreter's online. We're uh, trying to run testing uh, with, with the equipment, making sure that all the parties can hear. Can okay. Hear Mr. Lopez Fuentes, can you hear? Yes. All right. Can you, hear you cannot hear? All right. Do you need to hear? Can you hear the, you can hear? Okay. So are you running a test on that part now? Yes, Your Honor. All right, let's just get started, and if anything confidential needs to happen, we'll just uh, figure that out. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. Uh, normally, it works. Huh. Okay, well, we, we, we'll figure it out. I mean, we won't require anything confidential to be said out loud. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Uh, Lopez Fuentes, sir, the court finds probable cause for possession of cocaine and trespass on property after warning. Bond is set at 1,000 on count one and 100 on count two public defenders appointed. Juan Ramos Torres. Your Honor, State would just request no return on the Lopez Fuentes. Uh, 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 yes, I'll grant that. Court um, will order no return to the property where the trespass occurred at. Your Honor, I don't think the interpreter's coming through the headset. He's looking like he didn't hear anything. Okay. So, Mr. Interpreter, can you ask him if he heard you? So, maybe the the defendant headset isn't working either, Mr. Interpreter. Uh, if it pleases the court, we can just we can just do these over uh, well, over we, the loudspeaker well, the same way we did Julie and Asiola. Yes. Well, why don't why don't we? Uh, until we figure out what the glitch is. And uh, we'll just uh, make sure. Counsel, you just have to tell me if you need, uh, you, I, I guess you don't, we won't have the ability for you to be able to say anything. That's fine. Okay. All right, Juan Ramos Torres. Juan Torres. All right, uh, sir, uh, you were picked up for failure to appear. Three counts, bond is, remains at no bond. On those failure to appear offenses, the court takes no action on the uh, case that you were previously out on on bond uh, 18 CF 11707. Court takes no action on that case. Okay, he, está detenido bajo orden de arresto por tres incomparecencias. Está detenido sin fianza en esas tres incomparecencias. La corte, <coughs> perdón, no va a tomar acción en el caso por el cual estaba libre bajo fianza que es el caso 18CF11707. Yvette Rodriguez. Ma'am, the court finds probable cause for count one aggravated assault with the weapon. Bond remains at 2500 and um, battery bond is set at $100. The court orders no contact with the victim, no return to the location where this incident occurred, uh, with the exception of you are allowed a one-time visit uh, to pick up personal belongings. Further, no possession of no weapons or firearms as a condition of bond. And the court does appoint the public defender on your case. Thank you. Se termina causa probable en tu caso. En el primer cargo de amenaza agravada con arma, se fijan 2.500 dólares de fianza. En el segundo cargo de agresión física, se fijan 100 dólares de fianza. Se prohíbe el contacto con la víctima, se prohíbe el regreso al lugar de los hechos, excepto una vez con escorta policial para recoger efectos personales. Se prohíbe la posesión de armas blancas, armas de fuego y se designa al defensor público. Gracias. 
Carl Dallas. All right. Okay. Are we done with the it, Thank you, Mr. It, Interpreter. You thank excused. you, Your Honor, and have a great weekend. You do the same. Sir, the court finds probable cause for offense of trespass after warning and a conveyance and bond is set at $500 in that case. Um, State, you want me to order no return? Yes, please, Your Honor. Court orders no return to the location where this incident occurred and appoints the public defender to represent you in this matter. Thank you, sir. So what I do? No. Well, the charge is trespass. And you can ask your attorney for more details on what the allegations are regarding the charge. When do I get out? Uh, the bond is $500, and you can post that bond at your ability to post it. Can my, can my family come post my bond? Absolutely. Where at? Um, I can't tell you that because I don't know where. At a bill bonds? I don't know where. At I a just, bill bonds? I don't know where. I don't know the location. All right. Um, when, what, when, pay, why, in? He refused, Your Honor. Okay. He refused. So I'll reschedule to him for tomorrow. How about that? Sure. Oh, man. I, I don't want to have to read all this again in the morning. This is a lot. Uh, let me see here. But you all get different paperwork every single day, don't you? So, um, I'm going to keep this and put it right here. I'm going to remind myself I already read it. James Jerry Williams. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I mean, you can take the top paperwork tomorrow, but I want to keep the PC because I don't want to read this again in the morning if he shows up. Some kind of way. I got to remember that I already read that. Okay. That took me a long time. Okay. Oh, yeah, maybe you can put a note on it so it's already read. <laughs> Sir, I'm sorry. Um, as to your, your case, says, um, cases, the court does find probable cause for as follows aggravated assault on a law enforcement official with the motor vehicle bond is set at $5,000. Battery on a law enforcement officer, the court is setting bond in that case at $2,500. Criminal mischief bond is set at 150, um, which is lower on the, than what was recommended. Resisting an officer, the court reduces the bond to 150. Grand theft, third motor, third degree motor vehicle, and the court reduces that bond as well to 150. Further, sir, the court um, um, is revoking your ROR on your. May I be heard on that? You would like to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. All right, yes, ma'am. On his out on bond case, uh, 2019 MM3241, no information has been filed in that case, and it's been over 33 days. The arrest date is April 18, 2019. Can you, we ask can you provide bond. the case number again? Because I don't know that I have. Is sure. it, go ahead. It's 19 mm 3241 ao No information has been filed? No, that is, that is correct. Hmm. Right. April 18th is the arrest date. For the and um, can um, can that be confirmed by anyone other than the public defender? Yes. No. All right. The court will, um, the, the ROR status will remain in effect. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mel. Thomas Shins. Mr. Shan, sir, you were picked up on an out-of-county warrant for failure to appear. Bond is set at no bond and will remain as such. Thank you, sir. Well, it's, 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 yes, the teletype indicates 3,500. So that's what I'm going to go by. And the bond will stay at 3,500, sir. No. 
Ray Anthony Lamar. All right, sir, the court finds probable cause for the offense of trespass on property after a warning and bond is set at $500. Court is appointing a public defender. If, if, I'm sorry if I uh, didn't mention it in the last case. The court is, did appoint the public defender. Okay. All right, the court is appointing the public defender on all IA cases unless otherwise stated. Uh, Stephen Randall Wiggins. Your Honor, State would request no return on the Lamar. Uh, as to Mr. Lamar, the court yes. orders no return to the location where this incident occurred. Conditional bond. Stephen Randall Wiggins. Yes, ma'am. The court finds probable cause for possession of an alcoholic beverage in an open container. Bond is set at $250. This is a nonviolent misdemeanor. It's the state's monetary, non monetary bond policy to advocate for ROR in cases such as this. Um, um, I'm, I'm inclined to leave it at the bond of 250 unless the state agrees to an ROR. They would agree, Your Honor. You would? Yes, Your Honor. All right, the court will grant the request for ROR and will order ROR in this case. Renoir Amari Powell. The court finds um, probable cause for the charge of battery, dating violence, and orders bond of $500. Orders no contact with the victim, no return to the location where this happened, with the exception of a one-time visit to pick up any personal belongings. Um, the court further finds probable cause for possession of cannabis, and bond is set at $250. Possession of methamphetamine bond remains set at $1,000. Possession of fentanyl, uh, the court will um, set the bond as to possession of fentanyl at $250. Um, the court orders. Uh, uh, that's it. Sorry. Oh, for the, I, I didn't catch the bond amount for the battery. 500. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, we'll waive the reading of the charges on this one. Timmy Morgan Warren. Yes, we'll waive the reading of the charges. All right, the court finds probable cause for the offenses as noted, and I will appoint the public defender for representation in this case on all counts. Oh, bonds remain no bond. <laughs> sorry, Kishi. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, anything further? No, Your Honor. Okay. Cameo Bannister. Sir, the court finds probable cause for use of an anti shoplifting device um, and petty theft bond is set at 1,000 on count one and 100 on count two. The court um, is, uh, is revoking the ROR status on the case number 2019-CF-7877. Oh, I'm sorry, 2019-MM-4115. The court is revoking the ROR status and, and ordering a bond of $500. Your Honor, State would request no return. Uh, the court grants that request and orders no return to the location where this incident occurred as a condition of bond. Thank you. All right, so what's going to happen? Okay. Okay. So um, if I don't mind, I'll ask you. Unfortunately, no, sir. I'm not in a position to resolve the case if I today. If I don't bond, if I bond out by my next court date, can you guys have a plea for me? I am certain the public defender can make arrangements to have that happen. All right, you Thank have you. a nice day, Your Honor. You do the same. Thank you, sir. Roger Dale Christopher, uh, Christopher Roger Dale. Yes, ma'am. Um, sir, the court finds um, probable cause for possession of heroin and bond is uh, set at $1,000. The court finds probable cause for, for, for possession of meth, diamphetamine, and bond is reduced to $150. And the court appoints the public defender. Any questions, sir? Sir, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. 
Corey Albert Osborne, the court. Um, sir, you were picked up on a, a failure to appear and bond is set at no bond on um, both uh, counts of your failure to appear. Thank you, sir. Robert Gillum. All right, sir, the court finds probable cause for the offense of trespass after warning and bond is set at $500. Thank you, sir. Public defender's warning? Yes, ma'am. Okay. State will request no return, Your Honor. The court, yes, the court will order no return to the location of an incident as a condition of bond. Robert Forrest Lau. Thank you, sir. Look, um, you were picked up on an out of county warrant. Uh, bond will remain set at $1,000 in your case. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I, I, are we on Mr. Gillum? Law, Mr. Law, L A U X. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Thank you, sir. Mr. Uh, Brian Daniel Larmore. Brian Larmore. The court finds probable cause for petty theft. Bond is set at $250 in your case, sir. They would also request I didn't no hear return. you. And the court will order a condition that you not return to the location where this incident occurred as a condition of your bond. Thank you, sir. Antonio DeKeith. Uh, Antonio Morris DeKeith. Okay. All right, sir, the court um, finds probable cause uh, for resisting an officer without violence. Bond is set at $500. Attempting to injure a police dog, bond is set at $500. Grand theft of a motor vehicle, bond is set at $150. Leaving the scene of a crash with injuries, bond remains set at $2,500. Possession of cannabis, bond is set at $150. And possession of cocaine, bond is set at $150. Grand theft. One hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. Oh. It's a little hard to see. Quentin Jackson. Is, is that who you are? All right. Uh, you're picked up for a violation of community control. And bond will remain set at no bond in your case. Court does appoint the public defender. Okay. Um, this looks like. You have them read. All right. All right. Manuel Fernandez, you were picked up for violation of probation. The court will order the bond remain set at no bond in your case. Thomas Moore. Thank you, sir. Sir, you were picked up for violation of probation. Bond will remain set at $5,000 in your case. Thank you, sir. The court does appoint the public defender to represent you, sir. All right, Nicholas Gomez. Yeah. All right, the court finds uh, probable cause for false imprisonment and battery domestic violence as to count one, bond is set at $5,000. As to count two, 
bond is set at $250. The court orders as a condition of bond that you have no contact with the victim and that you not return to the location where this incident occurred. Uh, no possess no firearms or weapons as a condition of bond and that um, you are allowed a one-time visit in the presence of law enforcement if necessary to retrieve any personal belongings. Your Honor, um, can I be heard on the issue of um, the do not return? Um, he indicates to me that it's his house. We'd ask that you order a maintained separate residence, but the no contact be in place. Well, I, the court, the court is going to maintain the court's order at this time. Madam Prosecutor, the court is unable to find probable cause for violation of domestic injunction. Do you have, am I missing something? Your Honor, we would request a reset in order to obtain additional information to support. So, but the court is able to find probable cause for uh, all of the other related offenses. Uh, is uh, Shaquille Irby, is that who you are? Yes, ma'am. So the court finds probable cause for a burglary of a dwelling with an assault or a battery. Bond will remain set at no bond on that count. The court finds um, you know, probable cause for battery by, st by strangulation and bond is set at $500. And domestic violence, bond is set at $500. The court is in a unable to find at, um, probable cause at this time for violation of domestic injunction, but the state is asking for additional time and how much time? I have to be reset to Monday, Your Honor. Yeah. Your Honor, I would object to that because according to Florida Rules of Criminal Procedure 3.133A1, the state is only entitled to a 24 hour reset and after that 24 hour reset, they can request an additional 24 hours if they're extraordinary, upon showing extraordinary circumstances. And we just have- You know what, I think she's actually right about, I think you're right about that, I counsel. I think I think she's right about that. I mean, I don't think I need to relook at the rule. Um, I'm so sorry because I gave her more time on two other cases, uh, I but I won't do that in the future. But I'm going to give you the 24 hours, then you can ask uh, tomorrow for additional time. Um, unfortunately, I already gave you uh, some more time on the other two cases, but um, going forward, the court will only give 24 additional hours, and then um, an additional t amount of time if necessary at that time. Uh, so we'll bring him back tomorrow on the uh, other three counts, the grand theft and the violation of domestic injunctions. All right? Okay. Alan McFadden. Yes, ma'am. Right. 
the court is unable to find probable cause on this or was this a capious this is a warrant your honor yeah. oh okay um okay then there are two of them let me see here all right so you were picked up on um a warrant for um battery domestic violence warrant was served in two different cases actually bond will remain set at no bond but your honor he's entitled to a bond in these cases then the ia judge is supposed to set them it's just that since they're domestic violence cases well you know what i don't usually mind setting a bond on um, domestic violence cases but i have no narratives well, it's not a punishable by life offense it's no bond until you see the <coughs> ia judge because i like, need more information i have no narratives can I get more information on these two cases? He's picked up for failures to appear on these cases, Your Honor. Um, Your Honors, I can request the narratives on the underlying. Well, wait a minute. If they're failure to appear. These are failure to appear, so you would not be entitled to bond based on that. They're going to stay at no bond. I'm sorry. If it's failure to appear, if it's a new, new law violation, I will be happy to set a bond for this gentleman. But um, the paperwork's a little bit different looking than some of the other paperwork. Um, if in fact it is a if, if it's a failure to appear and that's what it looks like from all I'm I have, three weeks, Your Honor. Uh, the bond will remain set at no bond. Okay. Both cases. Okay, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I if you, it as a warrant arrest you give me any more information that um, proves that it is not a failure to appear, then I will be happy to reevaluate. Which case do you have on the failure to appear? What, which charge? Uh, both of cases, them. Cases 19 CF 7855 and 19 CF 7857. Your Honor, I've been in jail three weeks. What am I here for? I beg your pardon. I'm, you know. I've been in jail three weeks. Microphone. What am I here for? Mm -hmm. I've been in jail three weeks. What am I here for? Well, who are you? Are you Guadalupe Puebla? Dwayne McFadden, Jr. Your Honor, the 2019 um, 7855, is it, it's an affidavit to issue a, a arrest warrant. It's a new offense. The information was filed on 530. No, I'm not going to sit here and um, restate the same thing that I've already stated. Either I need a narrative so that I can determine probable cause and the appropriate bond or PTR or some release status, or it's a capious. The paperwork I have shows two KPI. The issue, so a capious is just it's a pickup order. It's not necessarily for a failure to appear. A capious was issued because the state filed charges and they issued a capious for a warrant for his arrest. Then get me the narratives so that I can evaluate what bond should be set, and I'd be happy to do that. I um, don't have the narratives. Only the state would have that narrative. Well, I'll be happy to do that with every single case, just like I'm doing with the cases that I'm going through right now. And until I uh, get that information, bond stays set at no bond. Are you resetting this for tomorrow? I haven't been asked to reset it for tomorrow. Is well, that what you, you were? If you don't have a narrative, then you don't have probable cause. I mean, but I have a capious. The capious is because they filed new charges. It's not because he failed to appear. Oh. Your Honor, I will request a reset. I don't think. Mm, well, let me just see what, time. what if I was Your Honor just wants handed. to get more information. Eighteen one one two one three three. Does he have one case or does he have two? Oh, okay. So I'm looking at one case now. So now the issue is, is I don't know if this paperwork goes with these files. So you know what, I'm not, uh, someone's going to have to organize this paperwork. This is not really my forte. I'm kind of bad at putting the right paperwork with the right files. Um, we'll call him back.
tomorrow. Okay? Okay. The court, um, what a lot of people, the court finds no probable cause for kidnapping or false imprisonment will allow the state 24 hours to provide probable cause for that. The court finds no probable cause for robbery will allow the state 20, 24 hours to find probable cause for that. Um, the court finds probable cause for battery, orders a bond of $500. Uh, the court, um, finds probable cause for resisting an officer. Bond is set at $500. The court does find probable cause for disorderly conduct. Bond is set at $100. The court finds probable cause for petty theft. Bond is set at $100. The um, uh, court further orders no contact with the victim in this case and no return to the location where this incident occurred, um, which does not appear that it it's hard for me to determine if it occurred at a residence since it uh, looks like a lot of the physical altercation occurred sort of in the street. Um, state, you have to tell me if there, I should order no return to the uh, residence. Yeah, I would. No. Uh, Your Honor, do you want me to make the probable cause argument at this time? Um, well, I don't know it, because uh, there's some people standing there. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to discuss with them. All right. Well, however you feel like you need to do it. If you feel like I could benefit from witness testimony, by all means, I'll hear from witnesses. If you just want to make legal argument, that's fine, too. Your Honor, as to the um, kidnap charge, State would concede that there was not a kidnap. But however, as to the false imprisonment, State would argue that there was false imprisonment based on the report indicating that the defendant did block in the uh, vehicle and block that vehicle from leaving. Um, um, defense is the argument that um, the accused blocked the vehicle, blocked a car with her body. No, I would say that's not sufficient for, some, for false imprisonment. A person can't possibly stop a car. It says no. that Guadalupe used car. her vehicle to yeah. block the other vehicle, so it's a vehicle blocking a vehicle, not a body blocking a vehicle, and then multiple bodies outside of the vehicle as the vehicle was blocking the other vehicle. I'll defer to the court. I'll find probable cause and um, 
order uh, um, I'll order the bond of one thousand dollars. Is that it? As to probable cause? For the uh, count one, Your Honor, as to count two, um, just trying to go down to the narrative. Um, it indicates that the defendant was fighting with the victims, and at that time, the victim, one of the victims dropped their wallet, and the defendant did pick it up during the time of the altercation. So, state would argue that that does qualify as robbery with no firearm or weapon. There was force being used when property was taken from the victim. The court declines to find probable cause for robbery. And um, if that is it, then the court um, at, at this time finds there is no probable cause for the robbery. And you're not asking for additional time to find more information, and I will, um, yes, I will uh, just find no probable cause as to that. <clears throat> if Your Honor would allow, I would request additional time if we can um, perhaps obtain more information from the officer. All right, you'll, you can get 24 hours on that. The Count defense two. would object that it's not something that can be cured, just for the record. She it's can cure it if she can get, get more information. So 24 hours, ma'am. And while these, while these folks have been standing there so patiently, um, neither side is asked to inquire of them, and I don't intend to inquire of them if you all don't need to inquire of them. Generally, I, I guess, it, are either, may I inquire? Yes, either side. I mean, they, they but, just, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the, I've, I've invited the state to inquire, but the state, I don't know, do you wish to inquire? I did want to inquire just as to the residents and if there would be no return. Okay, go well, ahead. Um, can you no yeah, no return. They're indicating no return. Um, I'm not sworn. I'm sorry, yeah. but that, that, I, I don't I, know if they've been I, sworn or stated their I need I need testimony. I don't I don't I, I can't whatever just happened is not enough for me. No, I know your honor. I was just wondering I didn't know if they had introduced themselves or put their name on the record or been sworn. Mm -hmm. If you wish to inquire of them before. then um Madam Clerk. Clerk. Let's go. Yeah. Um, let's make sure. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you must give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Please state your name for the record. My name is Aurelia Marie Escobedo. If you're going to speak to the court, you're going to have to speak into the microphone. My Otherwise, I cannot hear you. Sorry. My name is Aurelia Marie Escobedo. My name is Pablo. Uh, well, uh, 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 stay at the microphone. Okay. Then ask her any questions you'd like to ask. Uh, you were indicating... Well, I'm sorry, you indicated that your name is Aurelia, so you are one of the victims in this case, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And did this incident happen at your residence? It was not at the residence, um, but we did live with her, with the defendant. You, so you do live together? We did, but she just recently had tried to kick us out. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm unclear. Are you currently living in the same residence, the defendant uh, and you? Not at the moment, because prior to the altercation, she had been trying to kick us out, but it, it's not even really her home. So where this incident occurred, is that where you live? No, not where it occurred at. Okay. So, Your Honor, based on that state, we just request that they maintain separate residence. What about the other, the other witness? Uh, as to this victim, Your Honor. Okay. Well, let me just hear from all witnesses oh, yes, before I make a final decision. If you could. Could you introduce yourself, please, and state your name? <clears throat> Pablo Puebla. And you're also a listed victim in this case, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Do you reside at the same residence as the defendant? I do. And is that where this incident occurred? That's, no, it's not. Okay. Again, Your Honor, state would request separate residence for the defendant. Do the two of you live together? Yes. Okay. Well, I am very, I'm even more confused than I was because the female witness said that she does not reside. They said they but don't the reside male together. the witness said that they do reside together. And well, I'm, same, I'm just even more- The same more day she tried to kick us out, or she tried to kick us out, but it's not her home to kick us out. So we're still battling to try to- Well, maybe, maybe if you help me by a answering this question, do you have a place where you reside right now? That uh, is no, a I'm actually on the street right now, no. not listening. You're not letting me finish. Do you have a place where you reside right now that is a different location than where the defendant would reside if the defendant is released? Yeah. You do? We're homeless. Okay. 
All right. So in other words, you'll take care of your residence and she can go back to her residence. Is that what you're saying? Well, she does have mail that she is trying to withhold. I can't withhold hear you if you're not talking into the microphone. She does. I mean, it is our home. We, we're, we're, that's my, our address. Um, I don't know how, I mean. Mm, well, I don't really know. I mean, you all are asking me to Can enter orders based on it? what yeah, you don't right. know. Do you have any questions for these people? No, I don't have any questions for them. I was just, actually, no, I do have one question. This incident, did this occur at the residence that either she lives at or you live at? No. Where, okay, that's all I wanted to know. All right, well, I, it's, I can best make the right order based on the quality of the testimony I received. And I'm not, I'm not going to restrict someone from going to their own home if the other people don't have a greater right to be there. So it's either you figure that out so they can answer the questions. If and I can inquire one more time, Your Honor, I'm okay. just going to use the address to see if I can clarify the testimony. Go ahead, Ms. Merced. The address that I have listed here, listed here is 419 South Central Avenue. Is that where either of you are currently living? No. That's my job. That's my workplace. Okay, so this happened at your workplace? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. And just to confirm what was previously stated on the record, you are not currently, either of you, living with the defendant. Is that correct? No. Okay. All right. I think that's it. Oh, that's all I need. All right, the court um, orders no return to the location where this incident occurred. Um, I think I've already addressed the bonds. Yes, Your Honor. The court further orders no contact with the victims in this case and um, maintain separate residences. Can you put those names on the record so she knows who exactly not to have contact with? Um, or, uh, Aurelia Escobedo. No contact with Aurelia Escobedo. No contact with Pablo, Puebla. Pablo Puebla. Johnny Walters III. Yes, Your Honor. Sir, the court has reviewed your file and finds probable cause for aggravated battery on a pregnant individual. And um, bond will be set in that case at $2,500. The court finds probable cause for grand theft third degree. Bond is set at $500. And grand, uh, sorry, grand theft third degree motor vehicle. Bond is set at $500. And grand theft third degree bond is set at $150. The court is ordering you have no contact with the victim um, whatsoever, not return to the location where this incident occurred, with the exception of that you can return to uh, the uh, victim's residence one time to retrieve any personal belongings that may be present. There's a witness present. May I inquire? I don't if, know if she's uh, does the state wish to inquire of the, the person who's present? Uh, not at this time, Your Honor. All right, then yes, you may inquire. Could you please state your name for the record? Jamila Torbett. Um, what is your relationship to Mr. Walters? My boyfriend for seven years. Are you the alleged victim in this case? Am I? Are we together? Are you, are you the alleged victim in this case? Supposedly. Yeah. Yes. Um, Ma'am, I, I need you to speak into the microphone or I cannot hear you. I, yes. Okay. Supposedly. Um, would you like contact with Mr. Yes, Walters? Yes, ma'am. Are you afraid of Mr. Walters? No, not at all. Would you like Mr. Walters to return home? Yes, ma'am. Because he, he helped. Sorry. No, he, go ahead. I'm epileptic. And I have, we have a sick kid. He does majority of the help with the kids. So this, what's going on, is a complete misunderstanding. Okay. So I do need him home because he's the caregiver and he helps me. 
because of my medical condition and the kids. So. Um, I have nothing further. I'll, I'm ready for argument, but I'll let the state inquire if they need. Ms. Merced? We're, yeah, yes, Your Honor, I would like to inquire. Have there been any prior incidents between yourself and no, the defendant? Ma Has law enforcement ever been called out? No, ma'am. Were there any minors present when this took place? My daughter, she was two, but she was asleep. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right, any objection to no return as opposed to, sorry, no, no hostile contact as opposed to no contact whatsoever? The state would still object to no hostile contact and would request no contact based on the fact that a minor was present. And I'm currently looking at um, history and I believe, I'm just trying to double check a, a date of birth because I do have another incident. Um, another incident with this very same that's what I'm trying individual? to confirm, uh, whether it was um, the same victim. Is that, can that be confirmed? by anyone and I'm sorry you're Jamila George is that correct Jamila yeah yes your honor I do have a prior incident that took place um, according to the notes that I have here back in 2015 with the same victim I understand that this was eventually dropped but when I inquired of the victim whether law enforcement has ever been called out she did indicate no so state would be concerned that there may be a fear factor present Mm. The, the court, uh, it does seem to be confirmed from the record that there was prior contact with the uh, prior um, uh, contact with the victim as a victim in a separate case. So consequently, the court is going to order no contact. Defense is objecting given the victim's testimony. Your objections noted. No contact with the exception of one time um, returning to retrieve personal belongings. Other than that, no return. No possession of firearms or weapons. Okay. Thank you. Wendy Barthelis. Wendy Barthelis. Yes, Your Honor. Um, the court finds probable cause for violation of a domestic violence injunction, orders bond at $1,000. The court um, orders no contact with the victim in this case whatsoever. Possession of no weapons or firearms as a condition of bond in this case. Court appoints the public defender to represent you. Thank you. Thank you. Brennan Edward Scott. The court finds probable cause for battery. Domestic violence and orders bond at $500, no contact with the victim, no return to the location where this occurred, with the exception of a one-time return to retrieve any personal belongings if necessary. Public defense appointed. Marcia Franchillon Drake. I'm sorry, was the bond $1,000 on that? Madam Clerk. Thank you. Hmm. Um, mm. State. Yes, mm. Your Honor. The court is. Marissa Francis to Leon Drake. Thank you. You're the welcome. court is um, unable to find probable cause for battery. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, a, it's, an, assault. it's an assault. Sorry. Yes, the court does find probable cause for assault. 
and our orders of bond of five hundred dollars. No order as a condition of the bond. The court orders no contact with the victim and no return to the location where this incident occurred, with the exception of a one-time return to retrieve any personal belongings that may be present. Okay. Thank you. Um, Justin Harrington. Court finds probable cause for a battery, domestic violence, orders bond at $500, no return to the location where this happened, no contact with the victim. You are allowed one time um, in the presence of law enforcement to retrieve any personal belongings. Oh, yes, ma'am. Rainy Alexandria Holly. All right, the court finds probable cause for battery, domestic violence, and orders bond of $500. And, um, sir, what's your name? Joshua Walker. Let's wear him in. Do you want to talk to Mr. Walker, Ms. Merced? Not at this time, Your Honor. Um, would you like to speak with Mr. Walker? Yes, Your Honor. Um, are you the alleged victim in this case? I can't hear you. Are you the alleged victim in this case? Yes, ma'am. Um, would you like to have contact with um, Ms. Holly? Yes, ma'am. Are you afraid of Ms. Holly? No, ma'am. Would you like Ms. Holly to return home? Yes, ma'am. Given the, I have no further questions. Given the alleged victim's testimony, I'd ask for no hostile contact and that they be allowed to reside in the same residence. All right, the court is inclined to grant that. Does the state have any objection? Uh, Your Honor, if I just may ask one question. Go ahead. Were any uh, minors present when this incident took place? Not uh, in the immediate room, no. It was in like a back room. They didn't see anything. Have there ever been any prior incidents between yourself and the defendant? No, ma'am. Has law enforcement ever been called out? No, ma'am. Your Honor, at this time, state would still request no contact, but leave it to Your Honor's discretion. The court will order no hostile contact. The parties may remain in the same uh, home together, but no hostile contact, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jeffrey Lewis. I, I didn't hear what you said. $500. That was it. Okay. Yep. Jeffrey Lewis. All right, Mr. Lewis, the court finds probable cause for battery domestic violence and orders a bond of $500, as well as no contact with the victim, no return to the location where this incident occurred, with the exception of a one-time visit in the presence of law enforcement to retrieve personal belongings if needed. Jeremy Ramirez. State and the court is unable to find probable cause at this time for violation of a domestic violence injunction. Um, there may there is a reference made to an injunction. Um, the court needs verification of the injunction. Uh, it does state in the report, Your Honor, that the officer verified the injunction, but Your Honor is requesting a copy of it. Well, um, I'm requesting verification. Is this an Orange County case number, 2019-DR-2683? I believe that's the number of the injunction, and it, it, it indicates that it was issued in Pasco County. 
All right, well, I need verification. I can pull it up on the Pasco County um, oh, you can? clerk right. of court, I would imagine. Well, actually, no, I'm sorry, Your Honor, I wouldn't have access to their injunction files. Um, okay. I don't see how I could get a copy of the Pasco County injunction Well, file. how did the officer get it? The officer did indicate in his report that he verified the injunction via teletype, but you still want me to get a copy of so it from him? So if he verified it via teletype, then why can't I see it? Okay, Your Honor, I will request that they provide us with a copy. All right. Yes, I, mean, I just need to, to verify it. I guess if, if it's via teletype, it's fine. It needs to be attached. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Um, you want 24 hours? Oh, yes, please, Your Honor. It may All be right. reset. The court will allow 24 hours for you to obtain that. Alexander Jr. Santiago. The court finds probable cause in this case uh, for battery domestic violence and um, will order a bond of $500. Further, yeah, further I will hear from the, um, ma'am, what is your name? Dalianis Bonilla. All right, from Ms. Bonilla, I swear her name. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, and that's about the truth? Yes. All right, Ms. Merced, um, would you like to inquire of Ms. Bonilla? Not at this time, Your Honor. All right, how about you, Ms. Daly? Um, Ms. Bonilla, are you the alleged victim in this case? No, I can. I'm sorry, are you the alleged victim in this case? Yes. Um, would you like contact with Mr. Santiago? Yes. Are you afraid of Mr. Santiago? No. Would you like Mr. Santiago to return home and reside with you? Yeah. yeah. Well, I need to hear what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Is there any question you'd like to Ma'am, are you afraid of Mr. Mr. Santiago? I'm sorry, what? Are you afraid of Mr. Santiago? No. no. Given the alleged victim's testimony, I'd request that there's no hostile contact and they'd be allowed to maintain the same rep residence. Additionally, Mr. Santiago has zero criminal history um, and would qualify for PTR if they were able to live together. Ms. Merced. Isn't that what uh, Okay, never mind. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what the PTR officer said. I was saying that he should qualify oh, for PTR. Oh, I didn't hear what, I hear what you said. I didn't together. hear what she said. What did you say? The interview, he provided consistent information to the officer, seeing that he provided another information, called her on the phone, and then came back to provide for, di for different information so that the story would match. So for that reason, him providing conflicting information, she disqualified him for it. Well, She's disqualified no from... Even though oh, he has no criminal history? Correct. Not an arrest. Correct. Okay. All right. Well, we're just going to go ahead on and let Ms. Merced inquire. Um, I'm sorry. I, were there any minors present when this took place? No. Okay. And have there Is, is been, that a yes or a no? No. Have there been any prior incidents between yourself and the defendant? No. Has law enforcement ever been called out? No. If this type of incident were to happen again, would you call 911? Um, it was it was a misunderstanding. Ma'am, ma'am, are you over the age of 18? Yes. All right. Your Honor, based on the victim's testimony, it doesn't appear that she would call 911, and based on the test, well, the uh, statements from PTR that there may have been conflicting uh, information given initially, state would object to uh, the no hostile contact and request no contact and separate residence. The court will uh, decline to do that at this time uh, based on her testimony. Um, let me just uh, confirm. You said you're not afraid of him. No. All right. And you do want him in yes. the uh, residence with you. The court will allow no hostile contact. No hostile contact with her, sir. You know what that means? Yes? All right. Uh, the court will um, allow the, the bond of uh, $500 um, declining to allow PTR at this time. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir.
All right, um, Jason Allen. Yes, ma'am. All right, sir. All right, the court does find probable cause for failing to year two report vacating a residence within 44 hours, 48 hours, sorry, um, which is a sex offender violation. Um, do you have a recommended bond on this, Ms. Prosecutor? Uh, state would request no bond, Your Honor. Your Honor, it's not a punishable by life or capital offense. He's entitled to a, a reasonable monetary bond. All right, let me see. All right, the court is uh, finding that he does, he, he is entitled to a bond. Uh, the court will um, set a bond. Does the state have a recommendation as to the amount of the bond? No, Your Honor, we leave it to Your Honor's discretion. All right, the court will set the bond at $5,000. Thank you. Michael Bell. Sir, the court finds probable cause for count one burglary of a structure. Bond remains at $3,500 and count two burglary of a conveyance. Bond is $150. Um, the court is also ordering that you not return to the location of this incident uh, as a condition of bond and have no contact with the victim owners of the property. Thank you. Edward Black. How are you, Your Honor? Thank you, sir. Sir, the court finds probable cause for possession of cocaine. Bond remains set at $1,000. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Johnny Bryant. I guess I, this is one of the ones where I guess I will need that driving record. Um, otherwise, I'm not able to find probable cause on count three. For Johnny thinking. Bryant? Yes. Did you say count three or count two? Your count Honor? two, I'm sorry. Okay. Count your two. Honor, you count can two. only consider what's inside the four corners of the affidavit for mm -hmm. probable cause. Really? Yes. Wow. I'm going to look at this driving record. Okay. All right, um, as to count one, fleeing and attempting to elude a police officer, the court finds probable cause. Bond is set at $7,500.
As to count two driving while your license suspended with two prior convictions, uh, the court is unable to find probable cause of two prior convictions. As to, uh, but the court can find probable cause for driving while license suspended if the state wishes for me to do that. Uh, your Honor, state would request a reset so we can try to obtain the All right, record. the court will um, reschedule in 24 hours as to count two. As to count three, the court finds probable cause for possession of cannabis. Bond remains at $100 and resisting an officer without violence. The court finds probable cause. Bond also remains at $100. And the court does appoint the public defender. Denzel Butler. Mr. Butler, so you were picked up for failure to appear and the court bond will, will remain at one, zero bond. As to that, you will also have a charge of fleeing and attempting to elude resisting an officer and criminal mischief. Give me just one moment on those charges. All right, as to fleeing and attempting to elude, the court finds probable cause and the court will order a bond of $7,500. The court finds probable cause for resisting an officer. Bond is set at $100. And criminal mischief, the court finds probable cause. Bond is set at ROR. One moment, as to Mr. Butler, one, one moment. Uh, these are all failure to appear. All right, uh, Mr. Butler, I already addressed one of them, and I see two left. So you did have two additional failure to appear cases, and the court is ordering bond to remain at no bond on those two additional cases. Jerome Carroll. The court is unable to find probable cause for possession of cannabis with intent to sell or deliver. The court does find probable cause of possession of cannabis and bond is set at one remains at $100 for possession of cannabis. State you want 24 hours on the count yes, one? Yes, please, Your Honor. All right. And the court will um, at this time take no action in the um, case 2019 CF 2299. However, the court would like for this to be brought back um, for the court to reconsider uh, upon finding a probable cause in, on count one. Angel Corsino.
All right, the court finds probable cause as to possession of methamphetamine and bond is set at $1,000. The court finds no probable cause for possession of cannabis. Bond is set at ROR. And sir, there's also a failure to appear and bond will remain set at no bond on the failure to appear. Eric Nicholas Della Barbara. We bond it, Your Honor. Clifton jo Josiah Dixon. So the court finds probable cause for possession of a concealed firearm bond is, remains at $2,500 and possession of cannabis bond is $100 resisting an officer without violence bond is $100 as a condition of bond you're ordered to possess no firearms or weapons. Rockland Ellis. Miss um, Prosecutor, yes, Your Honor. what are nerd rope marijuana edibles? Um, my understanding is that like the nerd candies are little small dots, and so apparently they're on a strip that has the marijuana in them. Oh, okay. So it's that what, and along with the um, gummies, what is being referred to as the controlled substance? Um. There was also the, the the nerd rope was marijuana. The nerd refused gummy edibles were also marijuana, and then there were um, some cigars, pre-roll cigars. Um, I don't see anything other than marijuana. I apologize, Your Honor. If I could just have a moment, I thought there was something else on this one. I maybe well didn't. wait. Um, hmm. What is this THC vial? Oh, that's it. Uh, yeah, I think, I believe that would be it then, Your Honor. But. There's two, there's a Rhino 90% THC vial. The court finds probable cause for possession of a controlled substance and bond will remain set at $1,000. The court finds probable cause for possession of cannabis greater than 20 grams, bond is set at $500. Armed possession of cannabis, bond is set at $7,500. Your Honor, um, Mr. Ellis um, qualifies for pretrial release. We ask he be released on pretrial release. That's denied. All right, um, uh, Stephen Etienne. Yes, ma'am. Sir, the court finds probable cause for driving on a 
license while suspended with two prior convictions. Bond remains set at $2,500. Further, the court will revoke the bond in case number 2019 CF 4367 letter AO and bond is set at zero nine revoke ROR. Michael Gargano. Sir, you were picked up for failure to appear. Bond remains set at no bond. Sorry, Mr. Gar Mr. Gar Mr. Joseph Finn. Sorry, Joseph Finn. Sir, you were picked up for failure to appear. Two counts. Bond remains set at no bond. No bond on both counts. Not guilty. Thank you, sir. I, I, I will do so. Um, Tanel Giles. Are, are we done with Mr. Gargano? Yes, we're okay. done. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have called him I'm sorry, back. Sorry, Honor. Was that Mr. Finn? It was, no, it was Mr. Mr. Finn. Yeah. It was Mr. Gargano, then it was Mr. Finn. Oh, okay. I apologize. I had him in reverse. Mr. Order. Tennell Giles. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Prosecutor, is this a charge of possession of, I'm sorry, there's a page two, I, I, I'm, my mistake. All right, sir, the court does find probable cause for um, possession of MDMA ecstasy and the court um, further revokes the ROR uh, and actually bond remains set at $1,000. The court revokes ROR in case number 2019-CF-6896-AO and 2019-CF-6880-AO. ao revokes ROR bond is set at no bond, both cases. <laughs> Becky Goodwin. She bonded, it, Shauna. Christopher Harris. Yes, ma'am. Court finds probable cause for count one. Possession of methamphetamine, bond is set at 1,000, and count two, resisting an officer without violence, bond is set at $100. Further, the court will revoke the ROR status on case number 2017, CF 3489 out of Osceola County. The bond is set at no bond. The court revokes the bond on 2016, CF 2769, and bond is set at no bond. Yes, ma'am. Sir, ma'am, the court finds probable cause for uh, petty theft, subsequent offense, and bond is court will set bond at $1,000. The court will take no action as to the um, 2019 CF 6241 case. Thank 
Tiro Jackson. Sir, the court finds probable cause as to count one introduction of contraband into a facility and bond is set at 1,000 in possession of cocaine. Bond is set at 150. Sorry, one moment. Hold on. I have a second case. Yeah. Sir, you have an uh, out of county warrant um, where bond was ordered at no bond. Bond will remain at no bond in that case. Lorenzo Jackson. Lorenzo Johnson is behavior, Your Honor. Oh, sorry. Johnson. All right. Um, we call Mr. Johnson in the morning. Is that uh, so Lorenzo Johnson are resetting? Lorenzo. Okay. Uh, Reginald Johnson. He bonded, Your Honor. Okay. Reginald bonded. Regina Jones. Ma'am, the court finds probable cause for trafficking meth MDMA bond remains set at $50,000. Trafficking cocaine bond set is set at $50,000. Possession of cannabis bond is set at $100. And possession of paraphernalia bond is set at $100. Would your honor be inclined to reduce one of the $50,000 bonds? Um, any so objection? Since one's already set at $50,000. Madam Prosecutor, to reduction of trafficking of cocaine? No objection, your honor. The court will reduce that bond to five thousand dollars. Count two. Mark Jordan. Is that who you are? Yes, ma'am. Well, hmm. destruction of evidence, $1,000 bond for throwing a little bit of beer. State is, is, is what's going on with this case? I mean, technically. Why is it not just a, an uh, open container case? I'm unsure, Your Honor. Technically, it does qualify, however. If well, I don't really know. Um, what to do with this case? Um, I, I don't have any experience with this particular charge. I'm kind of reluctant to order a thousand dollar bond on what looks very closely resembling a an open container case. But I'll go through my bond schedule if I must. Um, or I could just um, just order a $250 bond. Is this a felony? Destruction of evidence is a felony, Your Honor. State, do you have any objection to the court ordering a $250 bond in this case? Your Honor, State would leave it at Your Honor's discretion. I will order a $250 bond. And it's the open container? No, 
I'm, I'm still sticking with the Sorry. destruction of evidence. Sorry. I just reduced the bond. I guess technically that's what it is. Dante Lewis. Your what was the bond on the um alcohol the open container? There was no open container. Oh, oh. ROR. Thank you. If there is a case, it's ROR. Thank you. And if there is no case, then it then uh, it's probably subsumed in the destruction of evidence case. Madam, Madam Prosecutor, did you show another case? I did not, Your Honor. <laughs> oh, I had it as both. I don't think there's another case. But if there is, <coughs> if it's for open container, ROR. Thank you. Um, Mr. Lewis. Good afternoon, John. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, the court finds probable cause as to trafficking in oxycodone bond is set at five thousand, sorry, fifty thousand dollars. Resisting an officer bond is set at one hundred. Um, no, I, I didn't see that. No, I did not. I, I just oh, no, overlooked no. it. Um, the court is um, noting that there was a uh, updated information as to the bond. For trafficking bond is set at one hundred thousand dollars rather than fifty thousand um, dollars. The court will order bond of one hundred dollars on the resisting offense and one hundred dollars on the possession of cannabis offense. Your Honor, my client wants me to ask you if you'd be inclined to reduce the hundred thousand dollar bond to fifty thousand dollars or no, less. No, sir, not not at this time. No. Uh, Michael Logan. So the court finds probable cause for grand theft third degree bond remains set at $500 in that case. Uh, the court will take no action as to the 2019 MM123 case. Junior Lewis. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You were picked up for failure to appear, and bond will remain in no bond on both counts of your failure to appear charge. Yes, but I had called um, that day I was supposed to go to court. My car was giving me trouble, and I called at 9.10. I was supposed to be in court at 9 a.m., and they said they were sending the message to the courtroom, and I called. Does, um, did you have a public defender on that charge, sir? No, I didn't. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do at this time. You do now have the public defender, and the public defender is able to uh, file a motion and bring it to the judge's attention that you had a legitimate excuse and that you were trying to get to court on time. So the lawyer will help you with that. Okay. Thank you. Marlene? Yes. Thermidal? Ma'am, the court finds probable cause for grand theft. Motor vehicle bond is set at $1,000, and resisting an officer bond is set at $100. Uh, the court will revoke the bond 
As to 2019 MM209 bond is, um, you know, oh, that's that's an open case. There was no bond on that case. May I be heard on that? She was found incompetent to proceed in both of those case numbers, so she's not out on bond. She's on conditional release. Oh, okay. Uh, well, the no court action. will take no action as to neither uh, 2019 MM1. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a six or a zero, uh, but 1618 or 1018 and uh, 2019 MM209. Both of those are open cases that do not have a bond or a release status on them. Anthony Morton. The court finds probable cause for count one, sale or delivery of cocaine. Bond is set at 150 and count two, delivery of a controlled substance within 1,000 feet of a convenience. And bond is set at $10,000. I beg your pardon? I said I have a probable cause challenge when you're ready. As to Alicia Pryor? Yes. All right. All right, the court finds probable cause, Ms. Pryor, to resisting an officer without violence. Bond will be set at $500. The court finds probable cause for um, driving um, with a suspended license as a habitual offender. Uh, bond is set at $2,500. Um, what says the defense as to challenge to the probable cause? We would be challenging count one to resisting an officer without violence. Um, the affidavit merely just tracks the language of the statute. There's no factual basis for how she actually resisted and what legal duty the officer was executing. Well, the court disagrees. The court finds probable cause based on the facts that the court reads in paragraph two. Uh, she qualifies for Unless she the state disagrees. Do you think that that is No, Your Honor, state would agree with Your Honor. All right, so I, I think that's sufficient probable cause. Now, I'm not, we're not trying to make a determination of if it's beyond a reasonable doubt, but it's probable cause. Yes, and you, you, were, you were asking? Um, she qualifies for straight pretrial release. We ask that she be released on pretrial release if the court's inclined. How can she qualify for straight pretrial release with this driving while license suspended record? But I guess if she does, she does. What does the um, pretrial release people say? All right, well, uh, any, uh, any objection? To granting her PTR? Uh, state would leave it to your honor. I'll grant PTR. Uh, Ma'am, you're going to be granted PTR on your cases rather than the bonds. You just need to qualify. Um, well, you already qualify. They've already assessed you. All right. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I see my, I see my, okay. And then uh, once we get to that, is that, okay. 
And that's what I already read. Okay, good. I'm going to start going fast again. All right, uh, Sammy Ramirez, sir, the court finds probable cause for attempted burglary of a conveyance bond is set at $1,000 and probable cause for resisting an officer without violence bond is set at $100. Further, the court will, um, the bond that was previously ordered in 2019 CF 6662, the court will revoke the bond and bond is set at no bond. May I be heard on that case? The bond that was previously ordered in 2019 CF 5707. The court will revoke the bond and bond is set at no bond on both counts. And in the case 2019 CF 5771, the court will revoke the bond and bond is set at zero bond on both counts. And yes, ma'am, you may be heard. Yes, um, on all of those case numbers that the court has just listed, no information has been filed as to the uh, 19 CF 5707. The arrest date was 423, so it's been over 33 days. As to Wait a minute, which one? Four? Uh, the first one, uh, 5707. Um, okay, that's my second one. So, I'm sorry, I have a. So question. 5707 has been over 33 days? Yes. Okay, what about the 6662? So that was a warrant case, and the warrant was issued on May 13th, but the offense date was April 22nd. Well, the warrant was not issued until May 13th, though. So the court, as to the 5707, the court will take no action as to that case, but I'm still revoking the bond in the other case. Um, there's a third case, 5711. What's the status on that one? No information's been filed. The arrest date on that case was 423. But the bonds were issued The bonds became off the one? No, okay. Um, so there's no bond on that one anyway, ma'am. So would he be able to post bond then? The current bond is set at 1,100. So we would stay at that then? Well, I thought you said he came off the bond. He came off of it, which means it's well enough that your original bond was 1,000. Okay. Um, well, back to the 33 days. Has it been more than 33 days or not? The arrest date was 423. All right, then the court will take no action as to that one. Okay. So, uh, all right. I think that covers every one of his cases. Irvin Richardson. The court finds probable cause, Mr. Richardson, for aggravated assault with the weapon. 
The bond remains set at $2,500. The court finds probable cause for grand theft. Bond is set at $150. The court is ordering that you have no contact with the victim whatsoever in this case, that you possess no firearms or we weapon as a condition of the bond, and uh, that you not um, um, I think that's it. No contact with the victim. There's another case, Your Honor. Uh, no, this is, oh, oh, it has two, two defendants. Okay. It's a warrant case. Um, Irvin Richardson has two. Well, maybe it's a warrant case, but I still. I think I have to read it. All right, sir, further the court finds uh, that you were picked up on a warrant for which the court does find probable cause for uh, burglary of a dwelling, which bond will remain set at $7,500. Grand theft bond is at, set at $150, remains set at $150. Dealing in stolen property bond remains at $150. Receiving money from the pawnbroker with false ID bond remains set at $150. And violations of the Florida Pawnbroker Act bond remains set at $150. Mr. Richardson would like me to ask you if you would reduce the bond on one of the one of the higher counts since there are so many. The court is disinclined to reduce the bond at this time. But thank you. John Doe, John Doe. No, every spirit. It's an AKA, Your Honor. I, I saw it on the clerk's website when I looked up this case. Well, I don't know. The, I don't know the other name. All I have is the John Doe. Um, what's the booking number? Okay. Well, let me just read through here. No, maybe, maybe experience. I can get another name. Why are you calling me John Doe? Oh, Avery Spirit, A.K.A. John Doe. No. I'll do these two, and then I'm gonna take a break after. I'll do this section separately. I think I can make it. All right, the court finds probable cause for cruelty to animals and bond will remain set at $2,000 and obstructing or opposing a police officer, the court will set bond at 150. Martha Lee St. Victor hmm. Is that who you are? 
Marcelli St. Victor. Jean Roberto Martelli St. Victor. Okay, thank you. The court finds probable cause for sale or delivery of methamphetamine. Bond is remains set at $15,000. Further, the court will revoke the bond that was previously set in 2019 CF 5276. Um, bond, um, bond was set in that for a total of 1,450 bond is revoked and set at no bond on may all I, four counts. Sorry, Your Honor, may I be heard? Yes, ma'am. Um, first, I would like to challenge probable cause on the sale and delivery of meth. Um, in the four corners of the arrest affidavit, there is no mention that it is actually meth because it was not tested positive for meth. It just says he confirmed it was meth. It doesn't say how. Generally, you're supposed to test it and to, find, to prove that it actually is methamphetamine. Madam Prosecutor. Your Honor, State would request a reset so that we may obtain a supplemental report. Okay, the court will um, decline to find probable cause at this time and will allow 24 hours for the state to provide additional uh, information. And for the out on bond case, no uh, Yeah, I will, uh, I will the, the court um, reverses the um, order to revoke the bond uh, pending the outcome of the state's investigation and providing court with additional details. Brandon Walker. He bonded, Your Honor. Thank you. And the court's going to take a recess. Uh, um, who, who are these two people? Those are um, two of my traffic cases. All right, Franz Vern. He bonded, you, Your Honor. He, he bonded? Okay, Franz Vern. Um, Mohammed Fayez. But is that who that is? No. No, this is South. Okay, well then. He must have bonded, Your Honor. I don't have that one either. Golam Muhammad. Is that who you are? Nineteen oh one six 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 five. Well, who are you? Jalen South. Who? Jalen South. Okay, Jalen South. Mr. South. I got Jalen South. Yes. The court finds probable cause for attaching a tag that was not assigned to your vehicle and bond remains set at $250. Your Honor, he has no criminal history and he qualifies for straight free trial release. Would the court be inclined? Yes, ma'am. PTR in lieu of bond. Tab don't bring anybody else in, please. Yes, Tobias Watts, is that who you are? The court, um, so you were picked up for failure to appear uh, bond will remain set at $500 on your FTA. Thank you, sir. Court's going to take a recess. How do I turn this off? All mute. We're back on the record. Ready to proceed. Are we starting with uh, Gentry? Ada Carrasco. Reset. Carolyn Gentry. Reset. She refused. Tomorrow. Reset tomorrow.
All right, Ms. Gentry, the court finds probable cause for petty theft. Bond will remain set at $250. Ms. Gentry has indicated to me that she would like to resolve her case. What says the state? There's no offer at this time, Your Honor. No offer at this time. Antonio Hopkins. Court finds probable cause for petty theft. Second offense bond remains set at $500 and for resisting an officer bond. Oh, actually the court did not find probable cause for resisting. The court had a question about that probable cause. State, um, did I miss something? Your Honor, uh, State would request a recess so that we can obtain a supplemental report. Right. Uh, the court does find probable cause for the, the petty theft. And uh, based on that, the court will revoke the PTR uh, and or the bond in that case, 2019 CF 6576 letter AO. And uh, bond will be set at no bond in that case. The court will be scheduled for 24 hours for the state to provide probable cause as to count two resisting an officer without violence. Tyler McFarland. What I mean. Tyler McFarland. Is that who you are? Yes, ma'am. The court finds probable cause for possession of cannabis. Bond is set at $100. Possession of paraphernalia bond is set at $500. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Would you please repeat those again? Uh, possession of cannabis count one. Bond is $100. Count two. Bond is $500. Your Honor, he has no criminal history. This is the state's non monetary ban bond policy to advocate for ROR in cases such as this. No criminal history. So what my PTR state says. Are we talking about Tyler McFarland? Or yes. Yes. State? Yes, Your Honor. State would have no objection to ROR. Um, ROR? Yes, Your Honor. This is just a possession of cannabis under 20 grams and a possession of drug paraphernalia with no criminal history. So the defendant would qualify for ROR under the state attorney's policy. All right. The court will allow ROR as to both count one and count two. Perry Vincent Martin. Yes, ma'am. The court finds probable cause for possession of a prescription drug without a script. Bond is set at $500. Sean Reedy. The court finds probable cause for trespassing in a structure or a conveyance. Bond is set at $500. Richard Rivera. Yes. Uh, Mr. Reedy wanted to know if he could resolve his case. State. No offer at this time, Your Honor. No offer at this time. Sure. Richard yeah. Rivera. Yeah. The court finds probable cause for criminal mischief. Bond is set at $500. And for possession of paraphernalia, bond is set at $150. Uh, Cody Lance. Cody Lance. Is there a Cody Lance present? Lance oh, I have Lance. Cody, sorry. Yes, that's who you're talking about. Is that who you are? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Court finds probable cause. Uh, possession of and or use of drug equipment. Bond is set at $500 and resisting an officer. Bond is set at $100. The court will revoke ROR as to 2019 CF 523 and bond is set at $2,000. The court will revoke ROR as to 2019 CF 524 AO. And bond is set at uh, $500 on each count for a total of $2,000. Oh, wait a minute. No, I didn't, count, I didn't add that right. $500 on each count for a total of uh, $2,500. Your Honor, may I be heard on those out of bond cases? Yes, ma'am. Um, no information has been filed in either of those cases, and the offense date for both of those was January 11th, 2019. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I know where you're going with that. So the court's going to um, uh, actually, the court will will um, take no action as to both the cases where I previously were was revoking the bond. I will not revoke the bond. I'll take no action. Not for this case. Not because of that. Not that charge. 
A Robert Leslie Rouse. The court finds probable cause for petty theft. Bond is set at two fifty. Brian Ansley. Court finds, uh, sir, that you were picked up on an out of county warrant, and bond will remain set at no bond on that out of county warrant. Okay. They'll come pick you up. And it looks like you may have two. Okay, sorry, just one. Got it. Angela Ariaga, Miss Ariaga, you were picked up on an out of county <laughs> warrant. Bond remains set at fifteen thousand on your out of county warrant, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Candice Belcher. Ma'am, you were picked up on an out-of-county warrant, and bond does remain set at no bond on your out-of-county warrant. Warren, Warren Imperial, Warren Imperial, are you Warren Imperial? Yes, Sir, you were picked up on an out-of-county warrant. Bond remains set at ten thousand dollars on that out-of-county warrant. Char Charnika Bryant. Charnika Bryant, ma'am, you were picked up on an out of county warrant. Uh, for you have two cases. Bond re remains set at no bond on both out of county warrants. Thank you, ma'am. Angel Negron Rivera. Angel Rivera, sir, you were picked up on an out of county warrant. A Seminole County bond will remain set at $2,000. Monique Rooney. I can't hear. I can't. I can't bond you out. Yes, you can. Ma'am, you were picked up for failure to appear on a violation of probation, and bond will remain set at $5,000. This is an out of county warrant. Kennedy Solar Vasquez. Sorry. Uh, sir, you were picked up on an out of county warrant. Bond remains set at no bond on your out of county warrant. They're going to come pick you up. James ST. He bonded you, I'm. Okay, Mr. ST has bonded. Um, Devon Janaris Siplin. So, I don't know what this is. The judge reads already denied bond in this case, so why am I seeing him? Wait, why is it Well, I have a note that bond was previously denied. Oh, it's like, well, maybe, it, you know what, my note doesn't make sense. Uh, oh, I, I'm sorry. My, I think my note is supposed to be on a different case. All right, the court does find probable cause for driving on a suspended license, and bond does remain set at $500 in your case, Mr. Siplin. He qualifies for straight pretrial release. Would the court be inclined to grant that? Um, yes. Okay. Yes, the court will grant PTR in this case. Um, Lloyd M Williams, Lloyd Malay, is this you? Yes, ma'am. Lloyd, Majlis. how do you pronounce your last name? Majlis Lloyd Williams. Oh, sorry, I thought the, the other name was your last name. So we can just go with Lloyd Williams here. Um, public defender previously appointed. Mm. Bond was previously set on this case as well, so I don't know why I have his case. It was reset for a probable cause, 24 hours. Uh, this is a 24 hour reset. Okay, I, I still don't have anything. Your Honor, I did provide a supplemental report. Um, to who? A copy was printed out by the clerk this who morning. Who did you provide it to? I provided it to the clerk and she, or it's not attached. I have, I have an extra copy. You have it? Okay. Record. Yes, yes, of course. Have you provided a copy to? Yes, I did. I, I, I thought they left a copy. I can't find it anymore. Okay. Do they have additional copies in there, Your Honor? Well, I don't know. Okay. I, didn't provide I didn't bring any extra paper with me. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sounds like somebody volunteered to give you a copy. It's fine with me. All right, Mr. Um, Williams, the court finds probable cause for aggravated assault. Which appears to be the only count. And it is with a weapon, a firearm. Ms. Prosecutor, do you have a recommendation as to the bond on this aggravated assault with the firearm? Uh, Your Honor, State would request no bond. It's not a punishable by life or capital offense. He's entitled to a bond. I, I'm inclined to give him a bond. I, I would like to have any input from the state as to the amount of the, the bond. Your Honor, given the dangerous nature, State would request a high bond and leave it at your honor's discretion as to the amount. Okay. Um, there's a difference if it's domestic versus if it's not domestic. Um, let me just look at this again. It did not. Um, this charge carries a minimum mandatory. The court's going to set bond at ten thousand dollars. The court is further ordering no contact with the victim. Your Honor, he has no criminal convictions. Would you be inclined to do five thousand? Uh, Ms. Merced. Your Honor, State would agree with uh, Your Honor's previous um, ten thousand dollar bond. And this is Mr. Williams? Yes, Lloyd Williams. I, I, no, I think I'm going to reduce it. I don't, I don't, I don't. The court's going to, the court will, will, um, will not do $10,000. The court will do 5000 Wait a minute. Let me just think about this for a minute. This is an unusual charge. It has minimum mandatories, but the judge is required to set a bond at IAs. I have, I have to. But let me just see how, what I think of, about this facts in this case. Just give me another look-see. So when he got out of the car, he did not have the gun. 
according to the facts, and when he was in the car, he had the gun. I, I will reduce it. Um, the court will reduce it to $4,500. $4, no contact with the victim. Um, no possession of any weapons or firearms as a condition of bond. Do not return to the uh, location where this incident occurred. Thank you, sir. Kathy Doobie. All right, ma'am, you were picked up for a violation of probation and the bond will remain set at no bond on your violation of probation oh. charge. Leonard Chad Barney, Harney, sorry, H-A-R-N-E-Y. Mr. Harney, yes, as to violation of probation, your bond will remain set at no bond. The court will set bond of $1,000 as to introduction of contraband in a county facility and $150 on possession of methamphetamine, both of which the court finds probable cause. Lawrence, De Lawrence LaSalle Tate. Yes, ma'am. The court finds probable cause for trespass on property after warning. Bond will remain at $500. You also picked up a violation of probation. Bond will remain set at no bond as to the VOP. I'm sorry. Oh. I think it's more paperwork. I need him his paperwork back. What reporting requirements does he have? Hmm? He, you have to instruct him to keep his address updated with the sheriff when, within 24 hours of his release. All right. Um, okay. Um, and is that it? I, I think State? so. State? Okay. Yes, Your Honor. State has nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Then the court will order that you maintain a current address with the sheriff's officer within 24 hours of release. All right. Yes, uh, will I be? Will I be what, what, no, you're not going to be released. You're buying a bond on your VOP. You can get a bond motion later, just not today. Go ahead and go. The sheriff's going to see. I'll have a lawyer come see you. Patrick Ancrum. All right, the court finds probable cause for possession of an open container. Bond stays set at 250. Your Honor, the defense of trial and probable cause because the beer was found in a bar window, which indicates to me that it was on the premises of the restaurant slash mm -hmm. bar. Well, now, if it was inside, I think I'd agree with you, but I... Maybe I shouldn't have assumed, but I assume it was outside. Well, there, I'm not. It doesn't say whether there's a porch or not. But if it's at a bar, if it's got an outside bar window, it usually means there's a porch to the outside, and you would be permitted to have alcoholic beverages on the porch, on the curtilage. Yeah, of well, the it doesn't say that he was on the porch. But there's a bar, like there's a bar window, so with a, a window to the outside where the alcoholic beverage was at would indicate mm. that there's a porch. So I'm imagining a. This is something different than what I imagined when I first read the probable cause. I took it to mean that there was just a window looking into the bar Me and that you placed it on the window sill. Well, but I now like there, are, the there are other potential um, interpretations of that window and I either need more information or I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, ROR him. What do you want, State? You want more information or? I don't know if the PC challenge is standing if so, then we would request a reset so that we can obtain a supplemental report. Okay. If the court's not inclined to reset, I would ask for RR anyway, considering it's a nonviolent misdemeanor. I would prefer not to have him come back. I will do the ROR. Um, and um, state, it does seem like at some point you, you are going to need some supplemental information. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, court um, will ROR this gentleman. Robert, Robert Hendricks. I have the same challenge, Your Honor. He was arrested with him. It's the same report. 
Is this the same window? Yes. He, the officer even mentions that in his report. Okay, let me, let me just look at it if it's sure. the same. Yeah. No, this one was in his hand. So the court finds probable cause. And bond will remain set at 250. The court will take no action on this case um, that the defendant was currently on bond. 2019 CF 3033, no action. James Allen Hoover. Mm -hmm. The court does find probable cause as to possession of alcoholic beverages. Uh, open container bond remains set at 250. Weston, Jack, Weston. Uh, Mr. Hoover would like to resolve this case. Madam, Madam Prosecutor. Uh, offer would be adjudication and credit time served, Your Honor. Does so Mr. Hoover wish to accept that? Mr. Hoover, is this your signature at the bottom of this plea form? Yes, ma'am. Sir, did you read this plea form in its entirety before you signed it? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that by um, changing your, well, how do you wish to enter your plea, sir? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest, ma'am. Do you understand that by entering a plea of no contest that you're giving up the rights on the plea form? Yes, ma'am. You understand that I'll be sentencing you here in just a few minutes uh, based on your uh, entering this plea of no contest? Um, do you, are you under the influence of any alcohol, drugs, or medication that would affect your uh, mental processes here today? No, ma'am. And did you have any questions about anything on this plea form that you, that nobody answered for you? No, ma'am. Um, the court does find there's probable cause for your charge and there's sufficient factual basis for your plea. I'll adjudicate you guilty, order credit for time served, and order uh, court costs. Um, um, all monies, uh, the court will um, order in a, to be paid um, in a judgment, civil judgment. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, ma'am. Weston Jackson. Yes, All right, sir, the court finds probable cause for possession of an alcoholic beverage or open, uh, which is an open container. Um, the bond will stay set at $250. Mr. Jackson would like to um, resolve his case. State. Offer be adjudication and credit time served, Your Honor. Does, does he wish to accept that? He says yes. Mr. Jackson, so is this your signature at the bottom of this plea form? She's at least in her, her questions. Did you sign this plea form here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma and do you understand that? Uh, first, let me ask you, do you wish to plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest do you understand that by pleading no contest, you're giving up the rights on the front of this plea form? Yes, ma'am. And did you read the document, sir? Yes, ma'am. Did you have any questions at all about anything on this document that nobody answered for you? No, are you under the influence of any alcohol, drugs, or medicine that would affect your mental processes at this time? Yeah, All right, there's a probable cause for your charge and there's a sufficient factual basis for your plea. The court will adjudicate you guilty or the credit for time served or the court cause, which must be, the court will reduce to a civil judgment. Thank, Thank you. All right, I don't have any other files. I think I'm done. 
Madam Clerk. All right, we're in recess.